capital gains to go up. I do, because when you actually look at the math, we spend so much time talking about increasing ordinary income rates for top 1% of individuals, and the amount of money we will collect from that is a drop in the bucket. Yeah, it's something like $90 billion a year if you put the wealthy and small business back up to where they were in the Clinton administration. So you generate not much money. However, if you do start to tax capital gains, which means your profits on uh, savings and tax uh, wins, if you do that, Ben, then investment drops. Well, there is a pool of capital in the world in the tens of trillions of dollars floating around. It's an international commodity. There's plenty of capital. There's no shortage of capital. The proof of that is that the return on capital is almost nil, and yet there's a tremendous amount of capital floating into the United States, flowing into the United States. And $90 billion may seem like very little to you, and I must say I'm, I'm impressed at your earnings if $90 billion seems like very little to you, but uh, try to cut $90 billion out of social welfare spending. You're not going to I, I agree with you. Yeah, Very difficult to do that. But, but if you start to constrict investment into the United States, we're not if, going to. Well, Nobody's if you raise the capital gains, uh, you certainly will. Well, that, no, no, we won't certainly do that. We had much higher capital gains rates than that during the 40s. 50s, 60s, yeah, it's early 70s. World. It's a but very we had a competitive world. world. We, had now. Huge, we had huge amounts of capital flowing. Uh, let me into just the US. tell you from my yeah. point of view, I'm an, uh, an investor and I have a portfolio. If, if capital gains goes to 25, 30 percent. I'm not going to invest in that. I'll Why? buy municipal Why bonds. Would, what is, what's your no, alternative? You, no, you, you would own municipal bonds that are yielding two or three percent. No, you get a little higher on that. Capital gains. I mean, if you have a good, if you have, even if you're in mutual, in, in spiders, even if you're in index funds, you're likely to get seven, eight, nine percent. You give away a third of that in tax, you're still doubling the return. The there's a risk in these investments. There. The numbers are very meaningful, though. Like, let's take a step back. If you were to actually tax a dollar made in the stock market or a dollar made with your real estate the same way as a dollar made in a factory, the U.S. government would raise $250 billion a year over the course of 10 years. That's $2.5 trillion. That's three times all right, so taxing you both, the top 1 percent. You both agree then to stave off bankruptcy, all right, that everyone in the United States is going to have to pay a little bit more well, tax. except that I don't think that the lower middle class or poor should have to pay anything except payroll tax and sales tax. What's the cutoff for that in your I mind? Don't, I don't know what it is, but it's... But whoa, whoa, it, but how can you say you don't know what it I, is? I, let's, let's say below 50000 a year. All right, People, so Anybody, I mean, people, anybody making 50000 and down has no tax obligation? Except for sales tax, property tax, gasoline tax. How about Social Security? Social Security There's tax, Medicaid right. tax. They're, they're, look, these people don't have any money. They're living All right, paycheck So you say you paycheck. eliminate the income tax, both state and federal, for anybody 50 and down. And but you? There's something very wrong with the, the way we dole out entitlements in this country. If you were to take a step back and look at, you know, what is the lifestyle of the median household in this country, more than 60 percent of people actually own their home. You've got people who have two cell phones. You've got people who eat out well, three times we did a, a month. There was a study on poverty. Those were living below Below the poverty line. Most have air conditioning, most have cell phones, most have big color TV. So this isn't Zimbabwe here, all right? But I don't know, I'm a little shaky on you guys. I think the economy, the U.S. economy, if you raise taxes, which Barack Obama wants to do, all right, that that's going to harm the economy. Well, the it's way not he wants going to, to raise, stimulate the, the economy. The way he wants to raise taxes is actually how it's going to harm the economy because we're focusing on ordinary income, and ordinary income is just the average guy working. It's the small business uh, that's barely pulling the doctor, money. The surgeon working in the investment bank or sometimes working. Look, we have had much higher, much higher tax rates than we have now, and we've had phenomenal prosperity. I'd rather tax eliminate the not, loopholes and, and do it that way. Do you think there's going to be yeah. enough in the loopholes? What, what loopholes? What, what, what loopholes? If you, if you can Cap. What you, loophole would you eliminate? I, I just put a cap on them. I, it, just like Robert said. There already is the a cap on the main loophole. The main 50000 bucks. that's all you can write off, and then everybody else pays. We need to like re engineer the entire would, tax, tax code. Like and I don't know under what law. Oh, I agree. Physics. I think the whole tax code should be much more self uh, much easier, and I think it should be a national sales tax just to pay Medicare. Small one. <laughs> all right, very interesting. Uh, next on the rundown.